He's having a moan up, though. I'm sick of him moaning, making excuses. Too many games, not enough players, referees. Every every week is the same. They're playing lots of games because of Manchester United and Manchester United playing cups, play lots of games. That's what Manchester United do. That's what Alec Ferguson did for 20 years. But you never heard them come complaining week in week out about too many games. It's part of business, you know. It's part of when you play uh, the highest level. Maybe they shouldn't go uh, the preseason a lot to Asia, you know. <laughs> Maybe they have to stop that. And you cannot moan because you have so many good players, even on the bench. The schedule, the schedule of the Premier. Uh, is force Manchester to play against all the times against the team that they came from one week rest. Yes, but we know that. And, and he say one yeah. other point, one other interesting point in my opinion uh, two days ago. He say if we are in final of the FA Cup, for example, now instead then we are out. When we can play against Barley? Against Barley we play. If we go also in, in final of the UEFA Cup, when we can play against Barley, he continued to repeat these things. I think that he wanted to put one uh, point in front of the how he's built the schedule during the, uh, during the season. Yeah. Be because don't forget that he was in Chelsea, for example. In Chelsea, he's played the same, the same schedule, the same things. So he knows was one complaint, in my opinion, regarding what he did. Uh, it was a complaint regarding the situation that is, is was in front. Yeah, but it's, that this is, is different. already going on me? for weeks. It goes on for weeks. Yeah. Yeah, for weeks, and he no, knows about it when the results are not I don't think so. I don't think so. Good. Listen, Rude. I think that Mourinho is a very smart person, yes, a very intelligent course. person. He never go against something that is... Uh, uh, like you say all the times, I want to go back at home, it's my country, it's my things. And then he has also experience from before about Chelsea. I don't think so that he's going against something. He's uh, just only saying, so, well, I have some... Well, 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 as a manager well, talk, he's, he's constantly talking about being t players being tired, too many games. What kind of message do you think he's putting in his players' You know, John, I want, to do, I want to tell you something, well. John. Next Tuesday and next Wednesday, instead of talking about Real Madrid Athletic and the Juventus Monaco because it's just solved. We opened this discussion okay, about okay. the manager, about everything. Yeah, but if you start telling but this is part of the say, English Premier League. Yeah, but if you start saying your players are tired, don't, don't the players start believing well, they're you're, tired? You're, yeah. you're giving them an excuse to come off against Celta Vigo, losing the game. They'll say, well, no, we're, tired say, because, yeah. we're tired because of no, the because it's just tired. to say, he say, now Europa League is our target. He say, it's our target. Yes, but the Premier League is very important for him. Yeah. But he needs to be he needs to be in the champion in the pre, uh, Champions League, you know, uh, position for yeah. next year. Yeah. So yeah. it's right. all important he spent for, for his right. recruiting. He spent yeah. two hundred million in the summer. <laughs> so he's and he offered already eighty five million now for uh, Mbappé. <laughs> also, yeah. So well, it's important for them. It's uh, it's important for Ajax to be in this final as well. You've, oh you've yeah, got it. away from you. Yeah, Final's not going to play Champions League. <laughs> Because, because Ajax, because Ajax <laughs> will take that place. Yes. Why? Oh, okay. Yeah. Because if you win the Champions League, they can't both play? No, because then they go, again, they have to go uh, pre-round or whatever. They, to it's, pre not a, near that. it's not immediately. It's not immediate. You've got to go into the, you have to the go playoff round. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Playoff <laughs> Can you imagine if that happened? This is the situation. Only Italy has four. England has four. Italy has two. Uh, Spain three, has four. Three, yeah, and three, three. Italy has three. Three, yeah. 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 Probably now, now, because the Juventus beat uh, Monaco for the ranking, probably they go in four. I read right, something I about. I'm not sure. The next round they change it all, so that all the big say, sides they yeah. all get four each. Yeah. So I don't want to say so something anyway. wrong, but uh, I think that is. Uh, we'll, is sa we'll, we'll, we'll save it for another time, shall we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, let us save it for next week. A goal that wins the game, a goal that could be so so crucial in a week's time. And there he is limping off. Of course, we'll get the very latest on both his and Ashley Young's injuries. The last thing United need is. Yet more players on the treatment table. Uh, gentlemen, look, we discussed the respective merits pre-match of a clean sheet and a goal. They got both. Let's get greedy and have both. It's a brilliant, brilliant result for Manchester United. To say, to get an away goal is really, really important. And as Rio mentioned, you know, you're going into this game thinking, right, let's keep it clean, keep it tight at the back. And uh, 
what a perfect result. Good, really good performance, solid away performance, and they're certainly in the driving seat now. And we said in, in the build-up to this, yes, Celta Vigo are, are 11th in the Liga, but to come here with this kind of crowd, in this atmosphere, and to get the result is so, so big for United. Yeah, I think mentally, I think more than anything today, they look like a team who understood how to play this game. The game management was very good today. The only thing I would criticise if there was anything was the chance they didn't take. They could have had this game out of the way. They could have rested players in the, in the next leg, really. That would be a frustration on Jose's part, but this was a very professional, very mature performance from this Manchester United team. Listen, you're a hard man to please. That's why you won so much. That's the way it rolls. OK, we'll have a look at those missed chances, of course. Before the night is out, we'll also get all the reaction from the dressing rooms as well. However, in the coming days, it becomes key. So, Juve against Monaco. Can Juve finish the job in that one? That's on Tuesday evening. Then on Wednesday, Atletico up against Real. Is there anything the hosts can do in that one, I wonder? And then, in a week's time, it is United up against Celta Vigo from 7.30 on BT Sport 2, with United having both the away goal and the lead in that one. And then it's Lyon up against Ajax. Ajax really with almost both feet in the final, wouldn't you agree? OK, right, we'll get the reaction of Rio and Michael in just a couple of moments to this one. Here's the goal, and here's a stat to send you Reds to bed feeling good. Never in the history of Man United won the first away leg away from home in Europe and not progress to the next stage. The omens are good. All the reaction comes next. Right, let's, let's get chatting then about the way that this evening has panned out. And I suppose it's, it's, it's largely positive. The only negative, I guess, being the, the Marcus Rashford injury. Um, what did you make of his performance tonight? It, it, a lot of huff and puff, and it didn't look like it was going to be his night for a while, did it? Yeah, other than the shot in the first half that he had, that he tested the goalkeeper, he made a fantastic save. Here we see it, it opens up for him, he, he takes on the... takes it on there, but... He does some great things in and around the box, other areas of the pitch, but it was maybe the, the, the final decision, the end part of his, of his play was maybe lacking. And then all of a sudden, this is what we were saying, me and Michael looked at each other, this is what you want him to do, exploit space behind. He gets the free kick, steps up and takes on the responsibility. It's a fantastic free kick, keeper could maybe be questioned, but you still got to put it in there and give yourself a chance, and he done that. And you described that free kick as brave, what did you mean? Well, I just think that when you're taking a free kick like that, you, you know that the goalkeeper's got to make a mistake, really, um, for it to go in. He's got to be stepping or guessing where it's going, and that's exactly what he did. I thought it was the goalkeeper's side, I thought it was his fault. However, Rashford's put it exactly where he wanted to put it. Great skill, great whip, great pace on it. And I thought he had an all-round good game tonight, because even when he doesn't score, obviously he scored tonight, but when he doesn't score, he still affects the game, he still creates movement and chances for other people, just in the in the direct nature of his game. And I think Manchester United looks such a more potent team when they've got pace yeah. up front. That's what we were saying, the contrast between him and Zlatan. I mean, Zlatan and their team, he's got them 20-odd goals this season. But in terms of giving you all-round performance, hustling, bustling the defenders, running in behind, stretching teams. Zlatan doesn't do that. He's not at an age where he can do that. This kid does, he gives you something extra. And midfielders would really appreciate that. Yeah, I think I think if you ask the, the, his teammates, they'd probably prefer to play with Rashford up front because he just gives them options. And I do think that Zlatan will probably always score a few more goals than Rashford if they, if they both started every week. However, I think the team would score a lot more with Rashford in the team. So the overriding factor is I think that, that Rashford is here to stay. And all of that leads to us asking what the immediate future holds for him. The last thing they can afford with Zlatan Ibrahimovic already on the sidelines is an injury for Marcus Rashford that rules him out of the next few matches. Just um, give us your thoughts on this and, and try and work out what, what you think happened here. Well, yeah, he's so uh, innocuous, innocuous, wasn't he? It is, he's, he's limping around, but he, he walked off. I don't, I, I wouldn't be too concerned about this injury. I'd be a little bit more concerned about uh, Ashley Young's, actually, because to come on off the bench and then walk off minutes later is, is probably not good. I would, I would suggest his season might be over, but I think Rashford's, it's hard to tell what it is. It might have been a knee in the back, it might be a stamp on the Achilles or something, but it doesn't look like it's a, an injury that's going to cause him too much problem. I think Ashley Young's season might be over. I think we can probably see that injury as well. They've had so many issues at the back in terms of injuries for their defenders. The last thing they want is, is this as well. Why, why are you so negative about this one? Well, you know, Jose Marino spoke about Luke Shaw the other day. You know, and you, you come on, you only play 10 minutes and you go off, it has to be a serious injury, and it's it's right. Um, Ashley Young isn't going to go off with just a little knock when he's just come on as a substitute, so I'd suggest that's uh, probably a muscle injury, and if it's a muscle injury, then you're talking a minimum of two, three weeks, so it's uh, season's not, not, not got yeah, long Ash, to go. Ash is, Ash is old school as well. He's from the old school, the old era where 
It's got to be a real injury for him to go off the pitch, and I think he's someone who's an experienced uh, campaigner in that change room, and he wouldn't want to be walking off. And, and to come on as a sub and be substituted, that's an embarrassment. Your ego takes a bashing, if that's, yeah. so you have to be injured to be coming off. OK, well, maybe we can get some updates on both of those injuries, because Jose is with Dez. Jose, leave here with a victory in that all-important way goal. Are you pleased with that performance tonight? I'm very pleased with the performance, not so pleased with the result. Um, a tough time should be should be already, I don't want to say three, but two. And um, the result is open. And I think we played enough to have the, the result closed. So next week, big match at, big match at Old Trafford. Free kick from Rashford as a beautiful strike. He's a 19-year-old kid, people forget that, but he's stepping up and taking responsibility at these key moments. He's a 19-year-old kid, but he's a 19-year-old kid in love with football. Uh, a kid that finished a training session and stays half an hour more every day to take free kicks and to wait for, uh, for the opportunity. Um, so it's just his mentality. He works, he works, he works. He's very mature and uh, let's forget the age because what matters is not the age, is the quality. Is he injured? He limped off. Is it a serious injury? He, start, he started the game already with, uh, with a little problem. And obviously, with the running and the continuity, he was feeling, and uh, Marcel was fresh, and uh, he had to give us this less than 15 minutes where we, we thought we still could, could score because plenty of plenty of space to to play. So we tried until until the end. We tried always since the first minute to 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 win the match and uh, and score goals, but um, we missed chances. But the team was was good, was strong, was compact. Uh, could 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 make a, a strong atmosphere look look uh, nice and could make um, a team that is very difficult to play against because of the way they they defend with um, seven eight nine players man to man and um, I think we played really well very good performance uh, we had also to play against the very negative records of Manchester United in Spain so it's good but uh, we have match at Old Trafford let's hope that Old Trafford wants us to win, because when Old Trafford wants, we win. Uh, so let's hope they want. You've raised the prospect of making changes for that game with the second leg in mind. Is that, is that uh, affected by tonight's result? No, it's not affected. It's what I have to do. It's what I have to do. So I'm going to do. Thanks. Well, he's already got his bag on his shoulder. They've obviously got a quick flight out of it. Interesting there, wasn't it, when Old Trafford was here tonight, it was bouncing before the game, and it certainly drives you on as a player. And semi-final it's uh, not to be sniffed at. i don't care what competition it is you remember when you retire you don't remember the qualification for your getting in the top four you remember the days that you win a trophy lift the trophy have a party have, it's just there the night so semi-final at old trafford as i say the atmosphere should be should be really good and they're a step closer to that final but jose started the interview by saying i'm pleased with the performance i'm not pleased with the result how nervy is it going to be in a week's time, only having this one goal push? Yeah, because he knows that he could have been uh, uh, sitting there a little bit more relaxed in the, in the second leg. He's obviously got to prepare his team that there is enough, there's a chance that they could concede a goal. That's the, been the problem. The Achilles Hill this season at home, they conceded silly goals against teams that they're expected to blow yeah, away. But they don't lose, though. That's the other key but thing they, about Old Trafford. Yeah, but they, 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 that's been the case. He knows that they, they're at home. They're not, not been as convinced as they should be. Man United at home normally blow teams away, especially the teams that are lower in the league. They haven't done that this season. And this team here will come there. They'll come there like a Bournemouth, like a, like a West Brom, mm. like a Swansea. So this team has still got to make sure they put that away. It's mentally, they've got to go into that game and, and, and produce a performance of the calibre they've done tonight. I don't think they score enough goals to blow teams away. That's the problem yeah. at the moment. This season, they've missed chances, yes, but they haven't created enough either. So I just don't think they score enough goals to be able to sit easily. And, and uh, But, you know, tonight was certainly a, a case of creating chances, first half in particular. You know, you're not, you, you're not necessarily calling that a chance. That's just a moment of brilliant spot. I think you can call this one a chance. He gets Jesse Lingard gets into a great area and he's literally inches off getting more on it. And I feel like this probably the second best chance. Lingard's second one is better, but again, as I say, you have to take your, your touch there to it makes it harder, but obviously you've got a defender on, so.
but I think this is a, a pull across the other other corner of the goal with the side foot. But you've got to, at this level, you've got to be ruthless. You know what it's like, Michael. At this level, you've got to punish teams. That's what they haven't done all season. You can see the frustration there because he wants teams put to the sword. You create chances as clear cut as we've seen tonight. You've got to put them away. Be ruthless. See teams out of sight so you can go into the next game with a confidence and an ability to rest players as and when you can. Because at this stage of the season, there's injuries mounting up as you saw it again tonight. They could rest players in the second leg if they'd have put this to bed tonight. You're so right. You know, Manchester United edging so close now to the final of the Europa League. How many times have they been so convincing in Europe this season that we've been dead impressed tonight? It was a very, very similar performance. Yeah, I was. I thought it was a really good performance tonight. I thought they were always in control. They conceded one chance, really, one serious chance. Um, and that was in the first half. And they created miles more chance of themselves and to go away into your go to go to Spain mm. um, any yeah. any game is, is hard out here and, and they control the game and deserve the win so there we go then just the one goal but hey maybe one goal is all that it takes and of course you can join us in seven days time at Old Trafford we spoke about tonight as being the biggest game of United season well not anymore because next Thursday from 7.30 that's the biggest game of their season make it through and they're in Stockholm in the final of the Europa League Thanks very much for joining us tonight. So it was the A-team, wasn't it, that blared out here at half-time? Unlike B.A. Baracus, they're on the plane home, and they do so with an away goal in their back pocket. Thanks once again to Marcus Rashford. The coming days are all about Arsenal and injuries. Then in a week's time, it's all about the final. Good night.